Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today I want to talk about lumber. How do you know when it is dry and ready to use? And then how do you actually keep it from warping and twisting in your shop? Let's dive in and take a look at this one. So let's say you just milled up all of this lumber and it's now the exact dimensions it should be on the cut list. And you stack it all up and lo and behold you come back the next day and all the pieces have cupped and twisted and they're all bent out of shape. What caused that? Well what happens is most of the time the moisture or the temperature in the shop has changed. And because of that the wood has absorbed the moisture. But because you stacked it all up only the outside faces can absorb moisture. And so in this case, if it suddenly got more humid in the shop overnight, then the top of this board will absorb more moisture and it will cup up because the bottom can't absorb any moisture. It's up against this. Or if you set this flat on concrete, then the bottom will absorb the moisture out of the concrete and the bottom will swell up and it will cup up. And you'll have all these problems with moisture changing things over time or some area of the board is more resilient and gets more water into it and it will start to twist the board. What you can do to fix that is use stickers. Stickers are pieces of wood that are about three quarter inch thick. Uh, some of these I have at one inch by three quarter inch and some of them are three quarter by three quarter. And what these will do is separate the pieces of wood. So I can start by putting two stickers down flat and then I can put my first piece of wood on that. And then I can put a couple more stickers on it and I can put my next piece of wood on that. And then I can put another sticker or two. In this case, it's kind of odd because normally you'd have them going across the board like this. And I can put another board on it and I can keep stickering them up. And what that's going to allow is air to flow in underneath. So I get the same air absorption on one side as I do on the other. So that way the whole board will swell and contract together rather than just one side or the other making it cup and twist. Now in my shop, it's perfectly air conditioned. It's always the same moisture and temperature all year round. So I don't worry about this that much. But if I were working in my garage or something like that, if I'm gonna let these sit for more than a couple hours, I'm gonna sticker them and stack them up because the moisture content and the temperature in my garage will vary quite a bit. So putting stickers between your boards will keep them flat and make them not twist as much. It's always good to have a whole stack of these on hand and they're great anytime that you just ripped up a bunch of boards, you'll usually have little scraps like this left over. Now that's great if you just milled up the lumber and you're trying to keep it flat. But what happens if you just got rough sawn lumber from the mill and it still needs to be dried? That's a whole nother bugaboo. How do you know when it's actually dry? How should you stack it up? How should you store it? And what are some of the other things that you can do to know that when is it ready to actually work with this wood? Now, usually when you ask the question of how long should I dry the wood, you're going to hear the standard answer of every inch is one year of air drying. And that's a good rule of thumb, but it is wildly inaccurate depending upon where you're drying things. So if I had this board that's inch and a half thick and I were drying it, I should leave it out for 18 months, a year and a half. But uh, it depends on the climate. You know, around here in the winter, this isn't going to dry much, so it's probably going to take a little bit longer. But if you are down south where it is drier and hotter, it's going to dry very, very quickly. If you're in a very humid environment, it's going to dry a bit slower. And so that inch per year is a very big ballpark. In some places, it might be as little as three or four months per inch. In some places, it might be two or three years per inch. And now I want to take a break and thank our sponsor, the Wood by Wright Venn Diagram t-shirt. This is a limited run. I haven't done one of these in years. Uh, so when these sell out, they are absolutely gone, but it's a kind of a fun way with uh, dad jokes, woodworking, you put all three together and you get uh, Wood by Wright. Also have the happy little wood curls on the sleeve and they are an incredibly comfortable Kali Potten blend. It's one of my favorite shirts. So get them while they last and thanks for supporting the channel. This then brings us to moisture meters, and I have quite a few of them here that I've collected over the years. And a lot of people will then tell you that it's dry when it reaches 9%, and that is a lie. The number that you read on your moisture meter is absolutely worthless, and that number means nothing. Sometimes it will be dry at 7%, sometimes it'll be dry at 5%, sometimes it'll be dry at 15%. I've had a few boards which reach their natural equilibrium in my shop at 
And then if you compare meter to meter in different location to different location, the exact same board will measure wildly different. So the number on the meter doesn't mean anything. Just saying that it reached 9% isn't going to tell me anything. I have to know about your shop, I have to know about your meter, I have to know about the type of wood. And even then, I won't know that because I've never been in your shop. I don't know what the standards are there. And every meter is going to be a little bit different. So don't look at the number, just use the number as a comparison not as a, ah, at this number it's dry. Now there are a few ways to tell when a wood is dry enough. And the way that I generally do it is I will bring in my stock of wet lumber and I'm going to cut off a piece. So in this case, this piece is about three and a quarter inches thick. So I'm going to cut off a piece that's about three and a quarter inches long so that it's just as long as it is tall. What that's gonna do is that piece is going to dry out much, much faster than the whole rest of this board. And so I'm going to, on that piece, I'm going to take its reading with a particular moisture meter and I'm gonna take its reading in my shop and I'm gonna write that on, on that piece. And then a month or two later, I'm gonna take its reading again and I'm gonna write that number below it. And I'm gonna keep taking its number for as long as it takes for that number to stabilize. It might start, start out at 30, 40, 50%, depending upon how wet it was. And then it will come down to something around 12, maybe 15, maybe as low as nine, and it will stable out and that number will stay about the same in my shop. When that happens, that lets me know this small block of wood is dry at this percentage in my shop with this meter. And now I can take the meter over to the main piece of wood and I can set it on that and I can keep an eye on that piece of wood until the whole piece of wood matches the same number as the small piece of wood. And then I know that everything is dry because I know that this particular wood in this particular shop with this particular meter is dry at this particular number. And that's the only time that that number actually matters because if I take it over to another piece of wood in this particular shop, I'm going to get a very different number. Now there are generally two different types of meters. There are the pin meters that have these two spiky pins you can put into the wood. And what it will do is it'll create a current across those and that current has to go through the wood. If there's enough moisture to carry the current, then it will give me a reading. But if it's too dry, that there isn't enough moisture for the current to go between those, then it won't give me any reading at all. The next ones have a capacitive sensor on here, and this will actually put a field through the wood and will sense in a good bit deeper. This will only sense in as far in as you can stick it into the wood, which is not very far. Whereas this will go in a bit farther. This will tell me down a eh, quarter inch to a half inch or so how dry the wood is inside. So usually a capacitive sensor is better, but there are a few instances where I like the pins. And that has led me to buy multiples over the years. Um, I recently came across this one from Dr. Meter and this one has two pins in it so I can use the pin sensor, but it also has the capacitive sensor on here. So with one device, I can get rid of all of these and just have the one usage. Most of the time, if you're just going to buy one, the one with the pins is the cheapest and will give you a relatively good reading, but you want to make sure that you're checking in the same area because if you're checking around knots or other figures like this, this may actually cause you some issue because one area of the wood might be more dense than another area of the wood. Also with the pins, you want to make sure you go across the grain. You don't want to go with the grain because if you go with the grain, there's a chance that the two pins will connect into the same straw that's going through the grain and you might get an odd reading from one spot to another. Whereas if you go across the grain, you're going to get a much better reading. So anytime when there's a small contact point, I want to use pins. If I can get the full face of the reader on there, then I can get a good reading. But if I put this on the end, I'm going to get a bad reading because it's not covering the full face of the sensor. So let me show you some of my readings. And in all of these, they're going to have different options. So you have to make sure you put it on a hardwood. Um, in this one, it gives you hardwood or softwood. Some of the other ones will actually give you different types of hardwood. And then I can put it flat here on the face. And this one is 11%. And this one is eh, 11% too. And this one is 9%. And this one is 12%. And so you can see you got 9 to 12%. These are all dry. These have all been in my shop for a very, very long time. Now, if I switch it over to the pins, now I put this in here, I'm going to get 9.6, where it was 11 with that one. And I've got, this one's even too dry. I'm not even going to get a reading in. Oh, 6 point, nope, no reading. And then this one, I've got... That one's too dry, I'm not even gonna get a reading in that one. 
So that's why usually if I have to have one or the other, I want a capacitive sensor because a capacitive sensor will give you a reading even if the wood is really nice and dry. Whereas the pins, once it gets down to a certain percentage, you're not going to get a good clean reading out of it. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of drying, it is very worth it to get a moisture sensor. Yes, the number will not tell you if it's dry from one shop to another in different places and different peoples, but it will give you an idea on a specific board. If you make that cutoff, you can measure that. But if you don't have the money for a sensor, there are a couple other ways you can do it. Number one, if the boards are small enough, what you can do is weigh the board and then write its actual weight on there. The more accurate you can get, the better. And then you're going to bring it back a few months later and you're going to weigh the board again and write the number down on there. And you're going to keep weighing the board until its weight stabilizes. And it may start out at uh, 21 pounds and then it will come down to 18 pounds and then it will come down to 17 pounds and then 16 and 16 and 16. And at that point, you know it's dry because its weight has stopped changing. It's gotten rid of the moisture it needs to get rid of. And usually if all your boards are approximately the same size and thickness, that will work well. As long as one of them comes out to be dry enough, then the rest of them should be dry enough. But if you have multiple different thicknesses and different sizes, the thinner and smaller ones will dry out much faster than the thicker ones. And that doesn't mean you're going to have a direct ratio. This being an inch and a half and this being three inch, that doesn't mean that this is going to dry half as fast as this one. This one may take ah, a year to dry and this one may take 18 months to dry even though it's twice as thick. Just because it's a different wood, it's a different thickness, there are lots of different variables that come into it. So if you're going to the lumber yard and you're wondering, is this lumber dry? There really isn't a great way for you to tell it in any one instance, unless you're talking to someone you trust and you trust their meter and they've been checking it over time, they'll tell you if it's dry or not. But if you're the one just carrying a meter in and you go to the lumber yard and you sit on there and say, ooh, 6.3, that's dry, right? Who knows? Um, you're not actually going to be able to get a number and know for certain that it's dry. You might get a rough idea. If it comes back at 20%, it's probably not dry. But if it comes back at you know 4 or 5%, it's probably dry because not too many woods get down to 4 or 5%. But even if it's kiln dried and you know it's dry from the mill, you're going to want to bring it back to the shop Sticker it up, put some spacers in between it, put some weight on that top board, and let it sit for a while. Let it acclimate to your shop because your shop is a different moisture than the shop where you bought it. And because of that, the wood is either going to need to absorb more moisture from your higher humidity or it's going to need to get rid of moisture because the other place was more humid. And you want to let it acclimate to your shop. And most of the time, that's only a few weeks. Uh, but if it was stored outside and air dried, it might actually be a couple months until it's ready to. If I'm bringing in a large, thick slab that's been air drying outside, I'm usually going to let it sit in my shop for two to three months before I start using it. And even then, I'm going to be checking with the meter and making sure it comes down to full dry. As to actually drying it and stickering it up, I like to do that in the shop so that it gets acclimated to the humidity of the particular shop. I know some people who are like, well, I can dry it out really quickly by putting it up in my attic. Yes, your attic is dry, your attic is hot, and it may dry it out very quickly, but you may end up case drying the wood. And what that means is you're drying the outside of the wood, but the inside is still wet. And you put the moisture meter on there and you'll get a good dry reading, but the inside of the board is still wet. You'll be drying it too fast. You actually want to dry it at a moderate rate. And so usually for me, that just means put it in my shop and let it go. I might put a fan on it every now and then, but I don't want to dry it too quickly. If you do put it in a kiln, uh, a kiln is great at sucking the moisture out and so that's one of the reasons why you can dry large amounts of wood in just a couple weeks because it's hot enough that it can get all that moisture out. Attics may get really hot, but they often don't get up hot enough to actually do a solid kiln drying. So make yourself some stickers and get a regular place where you can stack up lumber, whether you're actually drying it or you're just storing it in between steps in a project. It's always good to keep air movement around your lumber so that it doesn't warp and twist on you. I will leave links to the meters down below I like. I'll leave one that's a pin type, one that's a capacitive, and then one that is both, the ones that I like and use regularly. Um, I'll have those down below and if you do buy through those thank you that does help out this channel because those are affiliate links so i think that'll about do it i know there are lots more questions and if you do have those let me know those in the comments i'll try and answer as many of those as i can also i want to say thank you to everyone who's buying the shirt you are helping keep the channel alive as well as all the patrons scrolling over on the side thanks for helping keep the lights on and keeping the channel going so i think that'll about do it for now and until next time have a wonderful day 
Some people might say I have a rather dry sense of humor. 5%. I guess it is dry.